Hi, my name is Joey Spinella. I'm a product manager for LabVIEW at National Instruments, and I'm excited to share with you about what's new in LabVIEW 2015, how it will enable you to write code faster and write faster code. So as you're probably aware, LabVIEW has a long history of almost 30 years, and it has extended in so many different directions over those years to enable scientists and engineers to tackle new challenges with abstracted complexity. So we can look back through time at things like enabling engineers to conduct software engineering, bringing LabVIEW to the internet with web services, parallel programming, targeting FPGAs, and what it all comes down to is we at National Instruments have invested in it as a software platform. We've been committed to enabling you to take any hardware and to target any application, and we tie that all together through this one platform of LabVIEW that makes it a flexible solution and abstracts the complexity that might be related to a specific technology that you're implementing with. One of the constants we've seen over time for you as scientists and engineers is this pr increasing pressure to deliver faster on the solutions that you create, to get from an idea to a solution. And we've seen that LabVIEW has enabled you to do this more quickly than any other tool chain and without needing to get down in the weeds like you would using C or .NET. And so with LabVIEW 2015, as we thought about what we wanted to invest to bring this platform to the next level, we wanted to accelerate your productivity. And so this was based on the feedback we heard from you, our users, uh, all these different areas, um, are the different ways that you might spend time in the development environment in LabVIEW. And we wanted to go through each of these different areas, things like dropping elements, configuring them, wiring elements, architecting code, and make it so that you could do these more efficiently so you could more quickly deliver the solutions that you need to create. And so this comes down to both writing code faster as well as writing faster code, code that has better performance. And I believe we really did a great job of delivering this in LabVIEW 2015. I'm excited to share with you that progress we've made. So first, let's talk about writing code faster. So first of all, with LabVIEW, when you start with any blank VI, the first thing you're going to do is try to find some different elements in the integrated development environment to place on your block diagram or your front panel. And so there's a few different ways we can do this in LabVIEW um, through the palettes, using the quick drop keyboard shortcuts, or even dragging a file from uh, Windows Explorer. And so as we looked at this, uh, we realized this is probably an area where you already have a very efficient workflow. So if you want to explore for functions that you want to use, you can find that in the palettes. Or if you know exactly what you want to do, you can press control space, start typing the name of that function, and drop it on the black diagram. So for most of you guys, this is an area where you already are seeing some pretty good productivity. One of the s specific places that we've seen our users be really successful is with quick drop keyboard shortcuts. Now quick drop keyboard shortcuts, for those of you that aren't familiar, you press control space and this quick drop menu comes up. And so you can start typing the name of a control uh, or indicator, like something for the front panel, or a function for the block diagram. And you can type either of these, and it will populate with results that you can then place. The other interesting thing that you may not be aware of that you can do with Quick Drop Shortcut is actually type in keyboard shortcuts to complete some kind of script, almost like a macro in Microsoft Excel. And so, for example, if I press Control Space, and I've, I've highlighted a set of code that's not wired together, and then Control W, uh, th that code will automatically wire together. And that was uh, one, one keyboard shortcut we added in LabVIEW 2014, you may remember. And s but this, uh, these keyboard shortcuts are not just limited to what we develop internally, but this is actually a community extensible thing. And so there's a community page you can go check out the community quick drop keyboard shortcuts where other users like you have created shortcuts using something called VI scripting to give themselves a more streamlined workflow in the editor. So we're really excited about the, the way we've seen the community come together through that. And so this is more towards uh, when you're trying to 
like placing elements, but also when you're trying to wire them together or configure them, you might use quick drop keyboard shortcuts. Another really common way that users configure elements that we looked at how we could improve the productivity is through right-click shortcut menus. So whenever you right-click on something in LabVIEW and you get this uh, pop-up menu that displays, that's what we call a right-click shortcut menu. And so you'll see that there's all these different options of things that you can do to interact with that element you've selected, like change to control, change to indicator. These are really useful things when you're manipulating your code and maybe adapting to a new requirement that, that you have for your test or measurement application. And so w the right-click shortcuts, you may remember last year we added uh, a couple new, new shortcuts like uh, for a case selector, changing that, that input uh, terminal, making, making a terminal into the case selector. Um, and, but we, we've seen more and more requests for this on the ID Exchange. Uh, one of the things we had in the past was each one of these shortcuts required uh, custom R&D development. So I'm going to get more to that later. Uh, but this is one uh, popular way that you can also configure elements pretty quickly. Uh, for example, if you have a while loop, uh, one of the first things you'll probably do is right click on that stop if true um, element and create a control for it. So with LabVIEW 2015, I'm really excited to share with you we have seven new right click plugins that ship with LabVIEW 2015 and so you'll just discover these as you're using LabVIEW 2015 in the editor. So for example if I had a boolean on my front panel and I right clicked on it I would see below change to control this new change to array option. If I were to click that it would turn into an array. I'm really excited to demonstrate some of these to you later in the presentation uh, but you can see the seven new right click shortcut plugins that are that are listed right here you can empty a list box you can explore and find the location of a sub vi on disk you can remove and rewire objects that you've selected and you could size an array to contents you can transpose a 2d array and also if you drop a sub vi you can right click on that sub vi and in addition to just creating one constant or one indicator, you can create all controls and indicators. And so as we were thinking about accelerating the productivity for LabVIEW users that maybe have been using LabVIEW for a long time, we realized that in the same way that we opened up the Quick Drop keyboard shortcuts to be extensible by users, we also wanted to open up the right-click shortcut plugins so they could be extensible by you, our users. And so there's a couple parts to that. One part to that is this VI that you see displayed on the slide, Create Shortcut Menu Plugin from Template. So this is something that ships with LabVIEW. I'll show you where it's located on disk later that you can use to build your own right-click shortcuts. Now for some of you that may seem like a pretty advanced feature that you're not necessarily going to want to dive into, and that's okay. I think that makes sense. Uh, but this is where the beauty of the rich LabVIEW ecosystem comes into play. And so if you were to go to ni.com slash lvmenus, L-V-M-E-N-U-S, we have a community page where power users that are creating these powerful new shortcuts to be more efficient in developing LabVIEW code, They'll share those and you can download them and just put them in a specific directory on disk. And then after you restart LabVIEW, you'll have access to the, those new right click plugins. So, to give you a faster workflow for configuring elements and writing your code, we have these seven new right click plugins, but we also have this community where now anyone can create a new right click plugin that you can choose to install and use with LabVIEW 2015. So, I think these are some great features here. Uh, so, so far we've talked a little bit about just ways we can drop, configure, and wire elements. I think the new right-click plugins and the new template will really help um, round out what already is a really efficient workflow. But now let's talk a little bit about improved ways that we can document and debug our code. So, as you may remember from LabVIEW 2013, a new feature we added was to allow you to use hashtags in your comments, so the, the number sign and uh, LabVIEW would automatically recognize those and create links from what's called the Bookmark Manager. So the Bookmark Manager is a tool that you can open from anywhere in a LabVIEW project and it will display all the different comments that have this hashtag. And what's nice about this is it links back to them. 
So it will dynamically update to whatever you have on those comments. And when you double click on it, it will immediately take you to the location of that comment. So really useful for design reviews, for trying to remember where you left off, as well as uh, for debugging. So great documentation tool. One thing that we added this year in LabVIEW 2015 to also make you more efficient in documenting was native HTTP hyperlink support. So if you type HTTP colon slash slash, you'll see that that comment in a free label on the front panel or on the black diagram will automatically turn blue and underlined. And then you can type whatever link you want it to point to. And you can uh, then point to documentation resources like a PDF that's hosted on the website or maybe an HTML spec uh, that you've written. So also with debugging, we, we made a improvement that I, I'm really enjoying in LabVIEW 2015, and that's smarter probes. And so the probe watch window that you're probably very familiar with uh, allows you to view as many probes as you have created. Uh, two places it didn't work as well before was with arrays as well as with strings. And so we in LabVIEW 2014 and previous, you see I have this 2D array, but by default it only shows me one of the values in, in that array. Well, in LabVIEW 2015, it will automatically scale to show as many values as, as it can fit, and then as you resize the Pro Watch window, it's going to, to show all of those elements. So I'll touch on these later in the demo, uh, but I, I also want to mention them here just so you can be aware of them and excited about using these features as you download and use LabVIEW 2015. So another improvement that we made in LabVIEW 2015 is in actually architecting your application. Now, some of you may not be familiar with the Actor Framework, uh, but the Actor Framework is a very advanced architecture that some LabVIEW Power users have created that allows you to have these asynchronous processes that are running that are also communicating with each other. And so if you were to think about this in terms of a LabVIEW architecture, uh, it would be like if you had a bunch of parallel while loops in one VI that all had queued message handlers and were communicating to each other by different named queues. Now that would be a lot to, to put into one VI. The VI would become huge. And, but what we've, but the actor framework accomplishes this by abstracting that those queues and that message sending. So instead of having a huge queued message handler, you just have a state in a case structure uh, for each one of those for each one of those tasks that you, that you might do. And so those states turn into just an individual VI in the actor framework. So uh, this, this might be something that is too complex for your application needs. I just want to mention it as part of the growing software engineering efforts uh, that we've seen our users adopt with LabVIEW. And so we're proud to, to now support this natively through the LabVIEW project. So if you were to right click on my computer and go new, you would see a uh, the ability to create a new actor that could inherit from a specific actor in your project. We also have the ability to create messages for those actors. So another important piece of growth in the LabVIEW platform that will enable you to write code faster is the LabVIEW Tools Network. And probably most of you that have been using LabVIEW for a long time um, have some LabVIEW Tools Network add-ons installed on, on your machine, and that's why we have more than 4 million downloads. And so one of my favorites is the OpenG Toolkit. I want to mention a couple uh, new LabVIEW Tools Network add-ons uh, that we're highlighting this year. One of them is a brand new advanced plotting toolkit by Heliosphere Research. And so what this enables you to do is visualize your data faster, uh, through con configuration sub-VIs that will allow you to produce publication quality plots like you see in this slide, things like vector field or histograms or line plots. Uh, another really growing trend that we hear is more and more people working on Internet of Things applications. And so one toolkit that we do have on the LabVIEW Tools Network is the RTI DDS toolkit for LabVIEW, which enables you to take different targets, maybe a, co a compact Rio that's running, uh, so it has NI Linux real time on it, and you want to communicate between these different targets. And DDS is a really popular protocol for Internet of Things applications that provides you with 
the capability of doing scalable peer-to-peer -peer data communication. And so this is another really powerful toolkit uh, that we have on the LabVIEW Tools Network. They're going to enable you to build your application faster instead of needing to develop this kind of IP from scratch. So as you're also building these more advanced applications, I'm happy to announce that with LabVIEW 2014, we have four LabVIEW toolkits that are now available free of charge on the LabVIEW Tools Network for download. So you can see these four toolkits listed here. Uh, some of you may have used the LabVIEW Biomedical Toolkit, uh, which is really nice for um, doing uh, calculations r related to human health, like maybe doing an EKG, as well as some more advanced toolkits related to uh, clocking and uh, using advanced multi-core GPU processors. So this kind of brings us to the end of this section of writing code faster, but I'm not going to let myself get off the hook without showing you a demo, and that's what I'm most excited to do. So let's take a look in LabVIEW 2015 at how it will enable you to write code faster through all these methods I just talked about. In my project here, I have LabVIEW 2015 open. Uh, so as you can see, not, not much of the look and feel has changed, uh, but our focus has been on the just productivity features as well as the performance underneath the hood. And I'm going to talk more about the performance later. Uh, but I'm going to open up this main VI here. And this is a VI uh, I've received from one of my colleagues. I'm, he told me it might be useful for duct control and the application we're working on. Uh, so as I run it, it generates, it's supposed to generate some signals. And I just want to look through this VI and, and see how it works and make sure uh, everything uh, looks OK. OK, so I ran it here. I'm a little confused. Um, what the graph is showing here, it looks like my signal is discontinuous. Um, so I'm going to open up the block diagram. And uh, oh, I can see there's some nice uh, comments here. Someone's been using uh, the bookmark manager. Um, so that's going to be a nice way to help me kind of walk through some of the features I want to show you. Uh, so I want to take a look at this data that's popping up on my graph. So I'm going to create a, a probe here. Um, and so now in my probe watch window, I can run the VI and uh, take a look at the data that's, that's being displayed up there. And I can see um, the reason it might be discontinuous in these lines is that there's a bunch of uh, not a number values. Uh, so that means I'm, there's an imaginary component uh, to the number I'm looking at here. And so what we can see here is with, the, with LabVIEW 2015, the probe watch window uh, automatically scales to show me um, a number of different values in my array so I can interact with the data um, more fluidly. Um, so it's nice to have that, that probe watch window there. Uh, I want to I look at the data a little bit more closely. So I actually want to have a control on the front panel. And so I could drop, I could drop an array here and, and then drag my numeric inside of it like this. Um, but I don't want to do that. Um, instead, I'm going to save some time by right-clicking on this, this guy and using the new right-click shortcut menu to change to array. And so I change to array, and automatically it puts that in an array and updates. I can see it updated my data type on the block diagram. Uh, so I want it to be a 2D array so I can look at all this data. Uh, so I'm going to position it around a bit here. And now I can wire it up on the block diagram. OK, perfect. Uh, so now I can run my VI. I can take a look at the data. I see, once again, I see these not a number values appearing. Another new right-click shortcut menu I have is on, on my 2D array, I can go to Data Operations. And there's this new option to transpose the array. Uh, so I can transpose the, the data like that. And now I just want to point out, if I'd wanted to do this in LabVIEW 2014, uh, I would have needed to uh, maybe create a copy in another VI and change this to a control. And then I use, could have used Quick Drop to transpose the 2D array. And then maybe create an indicator. And then, only then, would I be able to actually uh, interact with these transpose values. You know, then I could maybe copy this back over. The nice thing with LabVIEW 2015 is we have this new 
data operations shortcut. So, so that's pretty handy. Uh, just little small things, but that you guys as our LabVIEW developers have given us this feedback and then we can create these right-click shortcuts. Okay, so I'm looking at this data. This data definitely looks wrong. So I want to go into the source of this data here. I see I have this analysis sub-VI also provided in this library that my coworker gave me. And so I just want to see where this VI is coming from. So I'm going to use a new right-click shortcut, uh, which is Explore. And what Explore does is it actually shows me the location on disk of where this sub-VI is located. So I can see, okay, it's actually in this old code folder. So that's probably a flag to me that maybe this isn't the most updated version. I might want to ask my colleague if he has a new version. Uh, but this is just a helpful way for us to keep track of where it is on disk. Uh, otherwise, if I wanted to find where it was on disk, I would have to go into the VI, uh, look at the VI properties, and I could find the location. Uh, but this is just a faster way for me to go and actually find that VI so maybe I could send it to a colleague. So now I'm going to take a look at this VI and take a look at the uh, the signal that's being generated here. So um, obviously this is a, a contrived example because I see this random value and then a, a numeric indicator, a, a numeric input, adding them together, multiplying them, getting the sine wave output. Okay, and then when I see this code, I realize that I'm taking the square root of the output of a sine wave. Uh, so that's probably problematic because I might be taking the square root of a negative number which is going to give me that imaginary component I'm seeing. So I want to remove this, this logic from my code. And so um, I could delete it and then wire through. Um, but wouldn't it be more cl less clicks if I could just right click on this sequence and just say uh, remove and rewire? Uh, so that's a new right click shortcut menu. Uh, really handy. You can see I could do it um, a number of times and uh, it will automatically rewire my application for me. And another thing I can do while I'm here is I can use, um, by pressing Control-Alt, uh, I can remove space from my block diagram. Um, so it, for those of you that aren't aware, uh, in the past we could press Control uh, to add space. Uh, what's new in LabVIEW 2015 is it, sh it animates this, this uh, indicator as you're creating the space so you can more accurately manipulate the space in your block diagram. And then a new feature is if you press Control alt uh, it will actually subtract space from your block diagram and you can do that in two dimensions as well. Uh, so really handy feature for navigating around my code as I'm making changes. Okay, uh, so save that change that I've made. So I'm going to go back to my front panel, run the code. Okay, this looks much better. I have continuous values here. Uh, because I'm no longer getting that imaginary component from taking the square root of the negative number out of that sine wave. So this, let's say that I'm happy with this, this signal now, and so now I want to write uh, this signal that I'm creating to the file so I can maybe load it into the firmware for the duck control I'm doing. And so I also have this, uh, this sub-VI that my coworker has given me. It says it's going to format the data into a string. I want to test it first just to see how it's working. So I'm going to right click and go to create. And so now I see this option to create all controls and indicators. So this is also a new feature in LabVIEW 2015, the new shortcut plugin. And some of you, you may recognize some of these right click shortcut menus as quick drop shortcuts that have been ported over. And we'll talk a little bit more about that process later. Um, so I'm going to create uh, controls and indicators for those. So now I can go on my front panel. Um, just going to add a few elements here. I want to see, I know I'm generating this array of different values, and I want to see if it's formatting it the way I anticipate I, I want to write to my text file. So I run here. Okay, it has the time as well as the values. Okay, that, that does look right. So that's the, the data I want to be recording uh, to the text file that I'm using. Uh, so now I'm going to delete this string, delete this placeholder, and I can wire it up and make that part of my application. Um, so I, I feel pretty happy with how my application is running now. I can, I can run it. It seems to be doing everything I need it to do. Um, but maybe, uh, you know, I'm, I just got really excited about these different uh, features I, I can I can use in LabVIEW 2015 to be more efficient. Maybe I want more. 
And so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a free label here and I'm going to point to a link of where I can go download more uh, quick drop, uh, more right click shortcut menus. Okay, so I have this free label here on my block diagram and notice now when I hover over it, it's a link that I can click on. And so I could also do the same thing um, on my front panel. And so I'm going to click on this link and I'll see it, it pops up, it redirects me, so ni.com slash LV menus, you can write that down. That redirects me to the LabVIEW shortcut menu plugins page. And so this is a community where power users can create new right click shortcut menus that you can then download and use in LabVIEW 2015. And so I can look around here, I can see, okay, there's one on here that allows me to create an event. And so what does that do? Oh, well, okay, well, if I have a some kind of control on my front panel, I could right click on it, create event case. So instead of me having to go to my event structure, add a new event case, and identify the correct control I want to use, I could actually just programmatically do this uh, from, the, from the front panel. Um, as, and this is using VI scripting behind the scenes. So for those of you not familiar with VI scripting, what VI scripting enables you to do is write, uh, write code that controls the LabVIEW editor. And so you can write VIs that write VIs, and you can do some interesting recursive stuff. Um, but that's a rabbit hole that you have to be careful when you go down. Uh, so, I, so let's say I have this uh, shortcut menu. I want to download it. So all I need to do is I can right click here, save link as. And now I'm going to go navigate to the location uh, where I need to save it on disk. And so I'm going to go to Program Files, uh, choose National Instruments, let's see, LabVIEW 2015. So these aren't going to work with LabVIEW 2014. It doesn't have the right plumbing to accept these right-click uh, right keyboard shortcuts. So definitely motivation for me to upgrade to LabVIEW 2015. I choose the Resource folder and then the Plugin subdirectory. And finally, Pop-up Menus and then edit time panel and diagram. And so then now I can see, actually I recognize some of these. So these were the ones I was already using, change constant to array or element. And so actually I can see I've actually already saved this create event LLB. Um, and so just by saving the LLB in this location, this is going to uh, make it so lab you can then recognize uh, the situations where it might want to bring up that right click pot shortcut and as well as the ability to then execute um, exactly what, what you need it to do when you do click on it. So I, I've already saved this one here, uh, but I just want to remind you this is, the, this is the path that you'll need to go to to find it. So the LabVIEW 2015 folder, then resource, plugins, pop-up menus, edit time panel, and diagram. And then you can just save these here. And these can be ones that you've created or ones someone from the community has created. And uh, it's a and so this is a way that you can continue to extend LabVIEW 2015 as you guys bring great ideas and improvements if you want. So now because we have that one, um, if I were to place an event structure on my block diagram, I could right click on this control and I could see I have this create event case option. And so I could say I want to have an event that will execute on the value change of this Boolean control. And I could do the, I think I could do the same thing uh, for this two-dimensional array. Oh, no, I don't quite have support for that. Um, so the, uh, the, and that's one of the other caveats to mention is when you are downloading these shortcut plugins from the community, you also do want to look at them a little bit more closely and make sure that uh, they are really doing what uh, they say they're doing, uh, as well as keep in mind that they might not be subject to the same rigor that a native LabVIEW feature would have. So kind of use it at your own risk, but I think there's some really exciting stuff in there that's going to make it faster for you to, to develop your applications uh, using LabVIEW. And so one other thing I want to mention uh, just about these shortcut plugins is it's not just the, like, the question is, how would I go about creating my own plugin? Um, and so actually, if I look at the, 
let me navigate back to that path we were at. Um, you can see in this pop-up menus folder, I have this create shortcut menu plugin from template option. And what this allows you to do is this is a template that helps you to create your own plugins. You can give it a name, you can choose if you want it to be something during edit time or runtime, and then it will give you the VI scripting plumbing for you to build that yourself. So if we were to just to open up an example like the one we were looking at previously, exploring a sub-VI, I can see these are the, the VIs that are included with it. Um, and so there's one to actually execute it. I can dive in. I can see there's uh, some pretty gnarly scripting code. Um, but what this, what this allows you to do is take, uh, take that sub-VI and find the place uh, where it's located on disk and uh, pull that up. So once again, this is not something necessarily for the faint of heart, uh, but it is a really interesting way that we're opening up LabVIEW for you to be able to extend it for your own needs. So uh, just in review, there's uh, a bunch of features. We covered some of the new shortcut plugins, the, as well as the smarter probes, the native hyperlink support. And now let's go back to the slides and take a look at some of the performance improvements in LabVIEW 2015. Uh, that you're also going to be really excited about using. Okay, so we just took a look into some of the new features to enable you to write code faster. Let's talk about how LabVIEW 2015 will enable you to write faster code that will perform with higher speed and more reliability, which is really important for a lot of the applications that you're working on. So as toward this end, I actually want to introduce one of our R&D teams of some of our most senior developers uh, that's called the LabVIEW Without Limits team. This is a team that was started by the father of LabVIEW, Jeff Kay. And what the team has been laser focused on for the last couple years has been internal architectural improvements to improve the load times, memory usage, application build time, and execution speed of LabVIEW applications. And we've made some really great progress with LabVIEW 2015. So one of the big improvements is enabling you to open libraries faster. So one of the improvements is the LabVIEW IDE, it launches faster. Also for large pack project libraries or PPLs, like we call them internally, we've seen an 8x faster load time um, to from load to run. Uh, so PPLs are are, are uh, compiled binaries that we often use in some of our really large RF drivers. Um, and for some of you more seasoned LabVIEW developers uh, with more software engineering savvy, you may use them for having plug-in applications uh, for your executables. And so compared to LabVIEW 2013 and LabVIEW 2014, you can see we've made some really big improvements uh, to that load time of, of these uh, packed binaries. Another improvement just to help you open code faster, this is in, in the development environment, is uh, when you don't have a, a module installed, such as the LabVIEW real-time module, and you try to open up a project that is using VIs from that real-time library, uh, LabVIEW is no longer going to search for those and, and try to have you navigate on disk uh, because we realize that's a module or a toolkit, you just don't have it. Uh, so instead, we're going to just cut to opening up the project, uh, like if you were to press the skip button, and then you'll see question mark placeholders for those VIs. Uh, because there's really nothing you can do in that situation uh, to find those VIs, what you would need to do is uh, install that toolkit or module on your computer. So those are some improvements to open code faster. One of the other areas I, I mentioned that is also really important is the memory overhead of applications. And so we invested a lot of resources into, in, into improving some of our, our own libraries that we use. So this is an example of a wireless LAN uh, test application that we were working on. And we were able to half the memory footprint of this application um, by taking a look at the different places where we were allocating memory for buffers and for queues in the application. And we believe you'll be able to do the same thing for your applications 
uh, because we took the tool that we created and we included it as part of the product. Uh, so the Profile Buffer Allocations tool, we actually included this in LabVIEW 2014 SP1 because we couldn't wait to get it out the door. Um, but this is a tool, so not to be confused with the VI Profiler, uh, but this is a tool that you uh, can open from a VI and it will give you a window into all the different places on disk uh, that are allocating buffers. And you can see that memory usage over time. And so this is similar to Desktop Execution Trace Toolkit. Gives you the ability to profile uh, the memory footprint of your application as it's running with a graphical view. So really excited about the potential you'll have for improving uh, your applications that have, have tight uh, resource allocations because uh, we've seen a lot of success with this tool as well internally. And so as we talk about writing code that can run more quickly, the conversation could not be complete without talking about the LabVIEW Rio architecture because the LabVIEW Rio architecture, which uses FPGAs and real-time processors, is aimed at addressing some of the performance limitations of PCs. So this enables you to have custom I.O. that's defined in the FPGA fabric, it's software defined, and we can compile LabVIEW code graphically down into uh, these hardware algorithms, as well as uh, we can program a real-time processor, a PC-based processor that can talk to the FPGA uh, so that we can get really low jitter and high amount of determinism in our applications. A key part of the LabVIEW Real architecture is the LabVIEW Real-Time and LabVIEW FPGA modules, and we've made some exciting improvements to these as well in LabVIEW 2015. So for the LabVIEW Real-Time module, one of the most notable changes is we updated the Linux kernel that's part of the NI Linux Real-Time operating system. We did some tests on this. One of the benefits of updating this kernel was some en enhanced security feature support and being most up to date with the, the Linux ecosystem. Uh, but we also saw some speed improvements of on average 11% faster loop rates for single point IO al applications. Another benefit of using this NI Linux real-time OS for compact Rio and now single board Rio targets is there's a, an ecosystem of other libraries and packages that we can use. And so we have an NI hosted repository with some great tools to help uh, if, if you want to integrate your Compact Rio into an existing web application that might be using Node.js or PHP or, or working with Python. Another new feature we added with the LabVIEW Real-Time module is the ability to build reusable shared libraries from the build specifications in your project. So for the LabVIEW FPGA module, uh, where we can create this highly abstracted but highly performant code that will compile and run on the FPGA fabric, one of the big new features that we added uh, was a new floating point PID VI for higher precision control. So you can now use floating point representation for your, your proportional integral derivative gains um, so that you're not limited by the, the fixed point the FPGA PID VI previously supported. Uh, we also have support for SPI and I2C for communication with peripherals, which is another common application for FPGA, as well as new capability for doing motor simulation uh, with ANSYS. So some really powerful new capabilities on the edge of your application. Also just in terms of your design workflow, so FPGAs are pretty complex tools that uh, if you were developing it from scratch would require copious amounts of VHDL to define. Uh, with LabVIEW FPGA, we make it easier. And one of the things we improved to make it even easier with LabVIEW 2015, we have continued support for the desktop execution node and some new examples uh, to show you how to work with that uh, desktop execution node almost as a test bench for prototyping the logic on your FPGA before you need to compile it and deploy it out to, to your hardware. And also, we continue to provide the capability for you to compile your code on the FPGA Compile Cloud, so you don't need to install the 10 gigs of, of install tools on your local machine. As we talk about FPGA in real time, it's also important that we mention another key piece of you being able to write faster code is by deploying your code onto higher performance targets with the latest commercial technology. So as you can see here, there's a rich family of new hardware that we've released with LabVIEW 2015, all fully supported by LabVIEW 2015. 
you will be the most successful programming this hardware uh, with the latest and greatest LabVIEW 2015. Uh, so let's step through some of this exciting new hardware. First off is a high performance compact DAC controller. This is a standalone controller that has a, a 1.9 gigahertz Intel Atom quad core processor. So you can use this, this quad core capabilities for running VIs on your compact Rio using uh, Windows embedded or using the NI Linux real time operating system, all while still being able to use uh, the NI DACMX driver. We also have a new 14 slot USB 3 compact DAC chassis. So this is a great solution for high channel count applications. This is the first time we have a 14 slot compact DAC chassis. And with a USB 3 super speed bus, uh, you'll be able to have really high throughput with data streaming rates of more than 250 megabits, megabytes per second. Another exciting product that we released uh, with LabVIEW 2015 is the High Voltage System SMU, the Source Measurement Unit. This is an industry-leading PXI module uh, that provides you with high power throughput as well as really high precision for the measurements that you're taking as, and some, some really interesting new features with NI Source Adapt technology. Another exciting new product category that we released with LabVIEW 2015 was the controller for Flex Rio. And so Flex Rio is a really high performance LabVIEW FPGA powered product uh, that allows you to use custom front end adapters based on your, your measurement or RF application needs. Before you needed to use this always with a PXI chassis, uh, but the controller for Flex Rio provides a a much smaller footprint, more portable controller uh, that you can get the same uh, high performance Kintec 7 capabilities out of. We are also extremely excited to announce our first 8 core PXIE controller. And so this controller packs a lot of punch with an Intel Xeon processor um, that has 8 physical and 16 logical CPU cores and up to 24 gigabytes a second system bandwidth each direction. So if you're working on a really high performance application, this PXIE controller will take you all the way there. Also on the Compact Rio side, uh, similar to the Compact DAC controllers we just talked about, we have a new performance Compact Rio that also uses the Intel Atom 1.9 gigahertz processor. There's a Kintec 7 FPGA on the back plane, so that packs a lot of FPGA processing power, uh, as well as all of the same peripherals and embedded UI support uh, that we saw from the Performance Compact Rios that we released last year. For single board Rio, we're extremely excited to release uh, single board Rios in the same form factor as before with Zinc and NI Linux real time support. Uh, so now the same NI Linux real-time code that you develop on your Performance Compact Rio, you can port that code seamlessly over to your single board Rio for high volume deployment and then use that same code uh, to port it over to a system on a module uh, when you need an even smaller form factor or even higher volume deployment. Uh, also when we talk about creating these really high performance RF based systems, I'm excited to announce that on the software driver side, uh, RFMX now has support for full range of cellular protocols. And so we now support all cellular standards from GSM to LTE Advanced, uh, while also providing a soft front panel debug experience uh, so that from the block diagram you can open up a front panel that looks like uh, you're using a box instrument, you can configure the nature of the measurement and save those settings as part of the application that you're developing. As, especially as we round out talking about the new hardware and we think about those underlying performance improvements we made thanks to the LabVIEW Without Limits team, uh, you really have the capability to write faster code in LabVIEW. So now you're probably pretty excited. You're thinking, how can I get LabVIEW? Uh, and so I just want to remind you about the ways that we let LabVIEW is packaged. Uh, so as you may remember with LabVIEW 2014, we added a lot of new toolkits into the different editions of LabVIEW. Uh, so LabVIEW Full Edition included the, the PID and Fuzzy Logic palettes. 
uh, and LabVIEW Professional also included the software engineering toolkits as well as uh, two really popular toolkits for connecting to databases and generating reports. Another way that we've tried to make it easier to get the sets of LabVIEW toolkits and modules you need is through LabVIEW application suites. And so LabVIEW suites are a combination of LabVIEW Professional as well as application software aimed at specific uh, topics you might be working on. So it's a single part number and it comes on a USB 3 media for an ultra fast install experience. But one thing that's new that, that we've included to make it even easier to get started with a new LabVIEW suite is a one year unlimited training and certification membership as part of this suite's purchase. So you can go and take as many LabVIEW or NI software classes as you want, as well as take as many certification exams uh, as you have time for in that first year. And so this is just a way that if you're a new uh, developer working on a project with a team, you're not really sure where to get started, the LabVIEW suites will uh, enable you to be most successful in having all the resources you need to hit the ground running. So there are three different flavors of LabVIEW suites. There's the LabVIEW Automated Test Suite, which includes Test Stand and Switch Executive, the LabVIEW Embedded Control and Monitoring Suite, which includes the LabVIEW Real-Time and FPGA modules, as well as the LabVIEW HIL and Real-Time Test Suite that includes Veristand and LabVIEW Real-Time and FPGA modules. And so you may be thinking now, uh, if it's time for you to upgrade to LabVIEW 2015, I think just on the features alone, uh, it, there are a lot of compelling reasons to upgrade to LabVIEW 2015 to accelerate your productivity. But the reality is it's not necessarily going to be the, the same answer for each LabVIEW developer. And that really depends on the life cycle of your group, uh, maybe some of the, the policies you have with your IT department, as well as just the reality of, of when you're starting a new project where you might want to use the latest and greatest hardware. And so to help walk you through that decision, we have a web page that you can go at ni.com slash labview slash what's new. And we have a link there to a white paper that walks through the LabVIEW upgrade guide and actually gives you a set of like the top 10 reasons you might want to upgrade from LabVIEW 2014 to LabVIEW 2015. Um, as well as maybe you're thinking about from LabVIEW 2012, your upgrade to LabVIEW 2015, you want to know all the different features you might have missed. And so we bubble up those top 10 features uh, for, for you to check out for whichever version of LabVIEW you're coming from and, and walk you through that decision based on some different consideration factors. So helpful resource for, for you to look at. Uh, and, and lastly, uh, the thing that makes LabVIEW go round is the standard service program. And this is the a program that your membership is what enables you to be successful using LabVIEW. So it's what gives you access to be able to upgrade to, to LabVIEW 2015 by keeping that membership active. It's what gives you uh, access to technical support so that as you run into challenging technical problems, you can talk with degreed engineers in your region and, and solve those problems. And the Standard Service Program also gives you access to online training so that you can learn at your own pace and uh, continue to develop your skills. And a really important piece of that is uh, enabling you to be successful through LabVIEW certifications. The certi Certified LabVIEW Associate Developer, if you've just spent a little bit of time uh, working with LabVIEW, maybe you've gone through Core 1 and Core 2, this is actually an attainable certification that will be meaningful for your career. And as you progress on through experience as Certified LabVIEW Developer, uh, which, which I am, uh, and the Certified LabVIEW Architect, which I aspire to be, are, are also really valuable industry-recognized certifications uh, that can help you learn best practices as well as help you advance your career by demonstrating the skills that you have. Another really exciting certification is the Certified LabVIEW Embedded Systems Developer to showcase that unique skill set around using LabVIEW FPGA and LabVIEW Real-Time to solve challenging system problems. So this brings us to the end of our discussion today about what's new in LabVIEW 2015. I hope it was helpful to you, and I'm excited to, to follow up with you to, to learn more about your specific application challenges you're trying to solve and how not just the new features in LabVIEW 2015, but really all of the features included in the LabVIEW platform uh, will enable you to be successful.